In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to texture a game asset using Lightwave's copy and paste UV tools. Now these come in really handy when you've got an object like this, which has got lots of repeating geometry, and it allows you to UV map one poly and then copy it across to groups of other polys. So it also allows you to use very, very small texture resolutions and makes the whole process very, very quick indeed. So what I've got here is a texture I've already made. This isn't based on a, a UV map. Uh, there's no UV map on this object so far. I've just created some windows, a glass frontage, uh, some color variations, and a bevel effect, which I want to put on these floor separators. So the tools we're going to be using are under map and UV texture and more and here we've got copy UVs, paste UVs and rotate UVs so I've just set up some shortcuts for these just for ease because I'm going to be using these a lot so um, the other tool I'm going to be using is uh, PLG make UV edit you can find this on the Lightweight 3D site uh, just search for um, PLG and it will take you to this page and this is the one that I'll be using but this whole pack is worth installing um, but this is the one I'm using in this tutorial okay so I'm just going to select a poly and select my PLG make UV edit hit M for numeric and I'm just going to hit make UV and that's created my UV map for this one poly so I'm going to select my building texture in the UV layout and I'm also going to apply that UV map to my object okay so for this first poly I'm just going to scale it place it somewhere that fits something like that works and then I'm going to do Alt C to copy Alt V to paste and I can select this whole edge loop now paste now what seems to happen with these copy and paste tools is you have to do it twice um, you can see here I've pasted that in and it's it's a bit screwy so if I just select that whole loop again and paste that's just work this time so now go ahead and do the rest of the floors if anyone from new tech is watching this it'd be great to have this fixed at some point so you can see how easy it is just to texture to multiple polys. So this bottom row you can see it's pasted in at 90 degrees. So I'm just going to select those and hit Alt D to rotate them. And now I can grab those and I'm going to put the glass frontage on here. So I can just drag that down in my UV map. That seems fine. Okay. So on these sides here, these are getting stretched. They're the wrong way up for a start. So I'm just going to rotate and then... I'm going to stick two windows in there, I think. I think these are upside down, actually. So 
something like that. You can see that's thrown these out now on the on the end here. So I'm just going to copy that single window, paste again. And then I can copy this one and paste on this side. And there we go. It looks like some of these windows are pasted in a bit strangely here. Yeah. So you can just paste these back in. Not too concerned about the back, but as I'm here. Just use the middle click to select here. Okay, that'll do for now. So now I'm going to start texturing this uh, trim so if I just solo a section of this and again use my PLG tools just going to hit make UV and I can move this into place to create the bevel effect So I'm just going to make the, uh, the bottom edge dark, the front edge, it's got the brown, and then the top edge with the base with the highlight. Okay. So what I can do now is select this poly alt c to copy and then select that whole top edge and then paste and then again copy the front paste you can see here again it's it's pasting oddly again so we can just paste it in again you can see the uv maps fixed up here so we'll get that on the side, copy, select the edge loop and paint. Just have to check that sometimes uh, they paste in at strange rotations, so just going through and fixing that up. That doesn't look too bad. Oh, there's one on the front. This is just pasted in strangely as well. It's got seems to have just done half so let's just copy and paste again that seems fine so as these bits of geometry were actually duplicated uh, from the same mesh uh, they're, they're all going to have the same point order so what I can do now is select that whole group copy and then paste you can see that's pasted the whole UV map in again. That twice as before. So you can select all of these that are duplicates. In. Sometimes this doesn't work, but. still quicker that it all so you can see that within a couple of minutes I'm getting really close to texture in this whole building so now let's do the vertical supports so I'm going to select just one loop on that Again, use my PLG edit, and this time I'm going to turn on 
turn off the hide handles and that gives me handles which I can click that's going to create a UV seam there so that's just unwrapped that section and I can now move that into position I mean, this texture is very very rough just made for this tutorial but you can see how you can really get things going quickly very quickly indeed so now if I copy that unhide the rest of the mesh I'm going to select the whole thing again paste and that's done that whole vertical support Some of these are pasted in again with the strange rotation. So I'll do those. Just making sure the highlights are the same way up as the there we go. Let's to the ones that I missed here. Okay, let's texture this path now. Just gonna copy one of these polys, fix that in and then move that into position. Let's do this really roughly for now, it's it's fine. So now I'll copy that one. Select my whole loop. Okay, so now I'm going to use PLG just on this poly. This is just an Engon. I'm going to triangulate at the end, but working with Engons is a bit easier than trying to select multiple polys. So I'm just going to hit Make UV. Enter. There's my water texture. Again, with these trees, I'm just going to use Make UV. Very simple UV map. And then there's my tree. And I can copy that. Oh, so. oh. Looks like one of these maps is a bit screwy. So I'm just going to duplicate my tree there. Looks like I've lost a poly somewhere over there, so I'm just going to um, let's clean this up. I'm going to copy this trim over. So literally just copying and pasting UV maps from one poly to another. Mm, 
sure what's happened here. Oh, they're not mapped yet. So I'm just going to get the inside poly. I'll use this one again. Get the right poly selected. I mean, that'd be fine for now. You get the idea. Mirror that across. And let's do the same. Looks like these could do with a scale. Just as they were showing some white through. those rotations they've not pasted in well let's try again There we go. You can see this technique allows you to do texturing really, really quickly. Um, and, you know, this texture size, 256 by 256, for quite a large game asset, and it doesn't look low resolution. So, I'll just finish off the, the roof here and get back to you. Okay, so I've uh, just gone ahead and finished off the texturing on the on the roof trim here, and just applied a bit of a map to the the top panel there. Same technique I use for the water. It's literally PLG, make UV. That's it. Um, so there we go. There, there's our textured uh, asset. So what I'm going to do now is going to send it to layout and start adding some lighting. Okay, so here we are in layout. So I want to, what I want to do is start adding some ambient occlusion and some lighting. So let's have a look at VPR. Let's turn off draft mode. Okay, that's not looking too bad, but let's have a look at the shadow color. Um, just going to add a purple. It's often a bit nicer than using grays. It's it, Grey seems to suck the life out of things. It's just a little bit softer. So okay, now let's add some global illumination, enable radiosity, backdrop only, and we're going to need a backdrop. So on the windows, backdrop options, just check gradient backdrop. That's not looking too bad. Um, I'm going to add some ambient occlusion to this now using the DP kit ambient occlusion. So search amb and we've got our ambient occlusion there. I'm going to plug that into diffuse and I'm also going to set the sampling mode to DPK and give it 64 samples. I'm going to set the range to be 2 meters and maybe brighten them a little with the scaler. OK, 
Okay, that's not looking too bad at all. Just rotate around that, just have a look. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to bake that ambient occlusion and lighting into its own map and then I'm going to use that texture to multiply over the top of my low resolution diffuse. So turn off VPI here, go back to modeler and I'm just going to create a second UV map um, and this is going to be an atlas map. So I'm just going to call that atlas and map type atlas and create okay save that and go back to layout and what I'm going to do now is go into my color channel and just turn off the color texture there so all I've got is this grayscale data essentially so with my surface baking camera I can bake that into a texture. So I'm going to select my mesh, it's the building, UV map, it's the atlas map this time. And I'm just going to offset that from the surface by a couple of millimetre. And then I'm going to press 6 to look at the camera view. So I'll set that to be the same resolution as my diffuse texture, 256 and then hit render so then I can save that out as a lightweight PNG 32 just going to replace that ok let's reload that and see what we've got so I'm going to load the AO texture I just saved and apply this to my model now. So I'm going to add layer, image map, UV, atlas UV map, and select the AO. You can see there, that's the shading we had before. So often in games, uh, especially for mobile stuff, um, Real-time lights are very expensive, so most stuff is unlit. Certainly in the in the work that I do. So to get that kind of uh, look, you want to just crank your luminosity up to 100, diffuse up down to zero, and then let's have a look in VPR. So I'm just going to set this to be Photoshop Multiply, and you'll see there. This is now unlit and it's got all the lighting baked in and a very very low resolution image if you're going to take this to unity either you could use the AO as a separate image or you might want to put the AO in the alpha channel of a TGA 32-bit image and use a shader which picks up the, the second UV map and uh, applies a multiply over your original color diffuse texture so there we go copy and paste UVs in Lightwave. Thank you.